Jen friends, I'm Major Garavari and you're watching this channel again. To take decades. But the good part is that it started happening now. Walmart, you heard about Tesla. Tesla says that okay. Earlier Tesla was saying no, we'll, we'll make in China and we'll sell in India. The Indian government said, you know, we want Kashmir. What will you do? Let's say, heaven forbid a million times, heaven forbid. If you were to get Indian Kashmir, what would you do with Indian Kashmir? Jain friends, I'm Major Garavari and you're watching the channel Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. You know, Prime Minister Modi and all the members of the Quad are in Japan. And uh, Prime Minister Modi met President Joe Biden and Joe Biden said something. Uh, I think it was very sweet and it is a way to connect. You know, humility actually connects a lot of people. And uh, uh, so he met uh, Prime Minister Modi and he said, I must take your autograph. Because this part is true, Prime Minister Modi is the most popular leader in the world. You know, there have been various surveys and he's come out on top in which uh, people said that, yeah, Prime Minister Modi is the most popular leader. So Joe Biden jokingly said, I, I need your autograph and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, also the Prime Minister of Australia, because, uh, you know, uh, they will go and there, there, is some, there is some function which Prime Minister Modi is supposed to attend. And he said that this place where the function is going to be held has only 20,000 seats. And the Prime Minister of Australia said, I do not know how I'm going to accommodate so many people because that 20,000 seats mark is full. It's gone. But now people are pressurizing the Prime Minister of Australia that we also want to go inside, somehow manage a seat for us. You know how Indians are, no? We have to go, so we have to go. So find out if you can. We'll stand, but let us enter the hall or let us enter the auditorium. You know, there's this is great zeal to meet Prime Minister Modi. And I think it's also also a, a, a function of how India is seen in the world, actually. Joe Biden might have said this jokingly, but the fact of the matter is, there is seriousness behind this. This is also messaging that you are the most popular leader in the world. How, how do you manage this? I'll also like to say that, uh, you know, beyond this, this whole thing about Prime Minister Modi's popularity, let me just deconstruct it. It's, it's not so much about, you know, so many kilometers of roads built every day, peace and security in the country, relative calm in Kashmir, uh, Indian economy going from X place to number five in the world and planning to go uh, to number three. That is a very important part of the construct and nobody is denying that. I think all these things are extremely, extremely important because without that, no country can progress. So I'm not saying these things are not important. I think uh, they are extremely important. That's what I feel. However, what Prime Minister Modi has done is given average common Indians like me a deep sense of pride. We were always a proud nation. It's not that we started becoming proud after 2014. That's not true. But there was always this thing, you know, that when you go abroad, when you go outside, there was this thing in our mind that, you see, we are going to America, we are going to Canada. This is a first world country and, you know, uh, stuff at home is not, uh, not so good as compared to outside. And when relatives came from abroad, many of our relatives, they would say that, you know, uh, there's this huge problem in India. Look at the mess. Look at this. Look at that. And they would say it in a very condescending manner. That has stopped. And I think this is Prime Minister Modi's greatest gift to every Indian. The deep sense of pride of being Indian. The deep sense of uncompromising pride. And I think no amount of money, no fifth largest economy, no third largest economy in the world can buy that pride. This pride has to be earned. And which is why this pride is so precious. Prime Minister Modi went to Papua New Guinea where the Prime Minister actually touched his feet. Again, uh, breaking all protocol. Somebody must have told him that uh, because the Prime Minister there is a Christian by his name, he is not a Hindu but it has Papua New Guinea has Hindu population. Somebody must have told him that you know this is how you greet your elders. This is how Hindus greet their elders. And so, uh, you know, this is what he did and matter of great pride I think. Small little things, you might say, but the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, when your Prime Minister is given so much of respect, this respect is not given to only Modi ji, this is given to 140 crore Indians. And I think we must take pause for a few seconds and reflect where India was and where India has gone. I think it's a massive leap forward. I think it's an exponential leap forward. It's not incremental, it's exponential. So, 
we are going in the right direction ladies and gentlemen i have more news for you and the news here is that russia says that if f16 jets are provided to ukraine there will be colossal risk for the west now uh, apparently what's happening is that uh, the ukraine president Vladimir Zelensky has been pushing Western allies to supply the jets for months with Downing Street saying on Saturday that the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak had again discussed the matter with him at the G7 summit in Japan and uh, basically Zelensky says I need fighter jets because now Zelensky wants to take the war to Russia. Zelensky there have been various reports and you can go and look it up on the internet from credible sources Zelensky is a corrupt guy all right. Brave, no doubt. I'm not saying Zelensky is not brave. He is. He's holding out there. He could have run away. He's holding out. He's fine. He's brave, but he's corrupt. Now, what Zelensky is doing is, or what the NATO countries are doing is, they're getting the Ukrainians to fight the Russians. They're giving them weapons. They're giving them money. Except for soldiers, they're giving everything. And this is what NATO will do. NATO is not going to put its own soldiers, its own citizens, you know, member countries, of course, because NATO is an alliance. It's not going to put its own people in harm's way. The body that bags that are coming back are Ukrainian body bags. They're not British or American or, or, or any other uh, member country of the NATO, not those people. These are clearly uh, Ukrainian body bags that are coming back and Russian of course on that side. And Russia knows this. Russia knows this very well. You can give them uh, javelin missiles, anti-tank missiles, you can give them stingers, you can give them billions of dollars of, of, of taxpayer money. You can do anything for the Ukrainians except sending your own troops to fight against the Russians. Special forces have been sent. There are reports of Navy SEALs and SAS operating on Ukrainian soil as advisors because the Ukrainians don't have that kind of training on how to use Western weapons because Ukrainian weaponry is very largely Russian. It's uh, very largely Russian and you know there is a difference. It's, it's like software. It's like using Apple and uh, you know Android. It's something like that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not being flippant when I'm making these, uh, uh, these comparisons because it's nothing like that. I'm just trying to drive home a point that, you know, you, you have a little bit of a problem if, if you're an Apple guy and if you're given, given an Android phone to use or an operating system for that matter, you're going to have a problem for a few days. Something like that happens in weapon systems also because the Western weapons are totally different and Russians are totally different. The language, the grammar is different. So they have these Navy SEALs and they have these special forces operating on the ground, but the problem is that troops are not going there. Now, with this whole thing about F-16s uh, being supplied to Ukraine, this is going to be a very, very big step because uh, any fighter aircraft is a strategic asset and it's very different from supplying a javelin missile or a stinger missile or a, or a, or a rifle or explosives or even artillery shells or rockets for that matter. You know, an aircraft is a strategic asset. It can go deep inside Russia and carry out bombing miss missions and surveillance missions and reconnaissance missions etc. So will UK actually supply uh, you know uh, uh, F-16s to uh, Ukraine? I don't know. I don't know for sure but uh, Russia says that everything will change in case they do. Uh, the other news that I have is that uh, you know Walmart is saying that uh, Walmart has given a statement that you know we are mulling over exporting toys from India. You know, Walmart is the biggest uh, retail chain in the world. Walmart sells everything. In America, they even sell guns. So Walmart is expanding rapidly in India. And Walmart says that, you know, from India, toys and fabric and home fabric and pharmaceuticals and healthcare products, the entire range of products uh, we are going to sell, we are going to export to the world. And why is that important? That is essentially important because I think, and this is my personal opinion, that because of the decoupling that the West is doing, from China, you know, there is an actual decoupling taking place. They want to move to another place that gives them, that gives them that competitive edge. China is no longer competitive now. The world is dependent upon China and even today, I'm not saying for a moment that India has replaced China. That is still many, many years, uh, you know, in the future. And it's not happening today. It's not happened as yet. China is still far ahead. But the fact of the matter is, China is no longer as competitive as India. That is one thing. And second thing is China's money comes from contract manufacturing. Most of the stuff that China manufactures is for American and European companies. That is where the money comes from. 
So if the European and American companies shift their production to India, that money comes to India and stops going to China. Now this is going to happen, this decoupling cannot happen overnight. You know, this coupling with China took decades and this decoupling may also take decades. But the good part is that it started happening now. Walmart, you heard about Tesla. Tesla says that, okay, earlier Tesla was saying, no, we'll, we'll make in China and we'll sell in India. The Indian government said no. And why can't you make in India? So they gave some cock and bull story about, you know, uh, the ecosystem and OEMs, etc. And we said nothing doing. If Mercedes can manufacture that top class vehicles, including uh, the electrical vehicle Mercedes, you know, the electrical Mercedes, if they can manufacture this in India, right, which is far better than a Tesla, by the way, far better. You know, Tesla has got that X factor, you know, it's, it's Tesla and stuff like that. But if you look at the mechanics, Mercedes has been making cars for, for a century or what? I don't know, but yeah, Mercedes goes way back. So they have a lot of experience that Tesla does not. Audi makes its cars here, BMW makes its cars here, Volvo makes its cars here. Almost every car manufacturer makes its cars here. I mean, the entire uh, Jaguar uh, and this Land Rover segment is made in India. Indians own it, it's owned by Tata. So obviously it's, it's made here. It's also made outside, but it's also made in India. So India has a certain automobile uh, ecosystem in place. So for Tesla to say that, no, we want to make in China, but we want to sell in India. That's not happening. Tesla has come around. They're saying we'll make in India. So that's also happening. Apple phones, we have already told you many times about, and you must have heard in the media also, how Tata has stepped up its game and said, now we'll start manufacturing Apple phones. Now, overall, what it looks like is that more and more companies are saying that we want to settle down in India. We want to make our bases in India. Then we'll export from India. And that is what the future looks like. So decoupling, yes, this is a marriage of geopolitics and geoeconomics. And uh, China is taking a beating. China still remains uh, the factory of the world. There is no doubt about it. But slowly and slowly, Chinese influence is waning. So that was about Walmart. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, the chief of army staff of the Pakistan army, how can we not discuss Pakistan? He says that the trials of uh, the people who were involved in the attack on the core commander's house, GHQ, various air bases, that is taking place, that has started taking place under the Pakistan Army Act and also the Official Secrets Act of Pakistan. Now, this is an extremely tough line. And the reason I think, this is my personal take, is the reason why uh, why the Pakistan Army has done it is simply because, uh, you know, uh, they uh, the Pakistan Army feels that the Chief Justice of Pakistan is pro-Imran Khan, he's Imran Khan's man for all practical purposes. And, uh, you know, he would do anything for Imran Khan. He would bend the constitution, bend the law. And so would his so-called quote-unquote brother judges. So what he is doing is the chief of army staff is saying that we will not go to the courts. We will have our own foggy courts, our military courts, and these people will be tried there. The last news that I have for you today is regarding, uh, regarding uh, G20. And, uh, you know, G20 is happening in Kashmir, 22nd to 24th. And... Uh, uh, Pakistan has written to all the, uh, you know, organization of Islamic cooperation, all these countries saying that you don't take part, you know, you're Muslims and you must support Muslims. You know how Pakistan is obsessed with religion because that country was created based on religion and it's overtly uh, obsessed with religion. And Pakistan keeps on saying that, you know, this is religion, religion, Islam, 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 which is why its economy is in such a mess because uh, they don't talk about the practical aspects for life, the, the, of life. There are various Muslim countries in the world and uh, nobody has this problem. They're good Muslims and they do trade with the rest of the world. They do their business. They go about their normal everyday lives. It's only Pakistan that has this deep set jihadi mindset. Now they're saying don't come to Kashmir. It does not matter who comes, who does not come. It is a point that India is trying to make. And that point has been made. And many Muslim countries are attending. So it does not matter. Number one. Number two, uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, Pakistan's infantile and juvenile external affairs minister, landed up in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and he says, I have been invited to speak at the quote-unquote Azad Jammu and Kashmir Assembly. That assembly is a sham. They have the so-called president or prime minister, whatever they have, he's a sham. He's an appointed figure. There are no elections like you and I understand elections. He's an appointee of Islamabad, right? And uh, Bilawal Bhutto is making out as if he's been invited to address the House of Commons or the House of Lords or the UK, uh, US Congress. No, it's, it's just, you know, he's just traveling from Islamabad to uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. 
and uh, there is a master slave relationship which they have i just want to ask bilawal bhutto you know you are saying that don't have the g20 it's not up to you anyway you're not even part of g20 i don't know why you're getting so excited and why are pakistanis getting so excited is none of your business this is this is this is a a, a forum of rich countries successful countries you're poor you're a failure nobody's invited you perhaps if there is a g150 maybe you'll make it there but certainly not in the g20 but i want to ask bilawal bhutto i want to ask the uh, all the all the pakistanis were listening in i just want to ask you one simple question you know you say kashmir banega pakistan no kashmir will become pakistan what have you done for the area that is under your control that you illegally occupied in 1947 48 what have you done for your part of kashmir okay forget about it what have you done for balochistan what have you done for khyber pakhtunkhwa what have you done for except for lahore what have you done for the rest of punjab what have you done for pakistan your so called azad kashmir which is actually pok does not have a stable mobile phone connection it does not have decent universities it does not have decent hospitals or schools for heaven's sake you don't even have a decent bus stand i mean what are you talking about you're just lying to the people again and again your entire existence is based on falsehood and you're lying to the people of 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 pakistan of the world that you know you know we want kashmir what will you do let's say heaven forbid a million times heaven forbid if you were to get indian kashmir what would you do with indian kashmir would you make it like your so called azad kashmir is that your grand plan is that your grand hope that you want to make this place another pakistan heaven forbid heaven forbid you know g20 is happening in kashmir whether pakistan or china like it or not if china wants to take part fine if china wants to pull out even better as i'm fond of saying if you come you're welcome if you don't come you're most welcome ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this video if you like this video please press the like button subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai